you. We had um, a chat a few months ago and I'm kind of, you're the kind of person I've been watching online for a long time and thinking, oh gosh, like how does she keep doing that? Like she's so <laughs> impressive. And I know it's funny to hear that, but that's the truth. And so, and then when we spoke again, I think we have these conversations where we just talk for half an hour and then think, oh, hang on a sec. What do um, we do? <laughs> yeah. And so I, I wanted to share this sort of uh, conversational ability that you have with my audience um, and the connection, because I love celebrating connection. And of course, yeah. I love a good transformation journey. Yes. So um, if you don't know me, I'm Natalie Coulson. I run a business called Amped Up Marketing and Communications. Um, I specialize in personal branding uh, as well as content marketing, um, do all sorts of things as we all do as multi-passionate uh, entrepreneurs and, and people and humans in general. Um, but today I have Tony Lontis with me and Tony's done so many things. It's hard to condense her bio <laughs> down into something um, quick. But Tony was a nurse for 35 years, which is impressive mm -hmm. on its own. Uh, and now you've built up a huge profile online and you are broadcast, you've broadcasted what hundreds of shows for yourself, but also for clients yes. um, across the world, um, a lot in the US, but I believe in other parts of the world as well. So yes. welcome. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to sharing your story because Thank you. um, it's very inspiring. Oh, thank you, Natalie. It's um, um, a real privilege to be on the other side of the interview desk and just relax and let someone else ask the questions for once. Thank you for your kind words. That's really lovely. So take me back. So you were a nurse uh, going about your daily work as a nurse. Was there a single moment where you thought, got to do something different or I want to get out of this, I want to build a profile or was it uh, or a broadcasting career or, or what was that like? Was that a moment or was it a series of moments? It was It was more like a series of moments <laughs> and an evolution. So I have to take the audience back to, so growing up, um, I was born with a congenital facial defect, which left me with left-sided facial palsy, which impacted on my self-esteem. Dysfunctional family, trauma on trauma on trauma throughout early and middle adult life, culminating in um, a breakdown in my 40s. Up to that point in time, I'd stayed in nursing, clinical management, and then into big pro statewide projects. So managing um, clinical networks across the state for maternity and neonatal, for, service, for surgical services, and then a big um, expansion project, hospital expansion project. So high level and had a breakdown. And that was my the start of my reckoning and self-discovery and learning and healing and all of that. Um, and I'll stop you there for a second. Yes. So people will often use the word breakdown um, yes. casually. I've certainly been through what was not a very pleasant experience, which you could call a yep. breakdown. What did your breakdown look like? Yeah, great question, Natalie, because it is different for many people, but mine was... Um, in the lead up in the years to that point, I felt like I was walking underwater and that tears were threatening to envelop me at any moment. The day that um, I lost the plot, I guess you could say, something simple happened at work and I had to have a talk with one of my colleagues and I ended up in tears and I could not stop crying. So by the end of, and I went home, went off on sick leave, but by the third day I was still crying and could not stop, could not understand, could not get a handle on what the heck was going on. Went to a GP, explained my life, what had been happening, etc. He sat me down and said, Tony, you're mentally and physically exhausted your brain has decided enough is enough and it's not going to allow you to get through this time without doing some work on yourself and on your healing and getting yourself into a better state. So that was the crux. When a, it, it, The GP sort of said to me, if you don't start healing and dealing, you're not going to make it to 50 because I'd started by that stage to have some pretty dark thoughts and suicidal thoughts and 
that's not great you know that that's no human being um should get to that point and not have help so i'm pretty passionate about mental health and talking openly and honestly about it so that space and time was very black very dark very horrible and horrible things happened in that space as well so i was about to get married my uh, daughter disclosed a history of sexual abuse and uh, that happened at that time as well and that just made everything worse Nat, just just worse so that was the beginning of my life changing and i was uh 40 or 41 i think around that i spent the next 10 years learning about trauma and being in quite intense therapy and getting through and managing depression and anxiety. Um, it was a hard 10 years, lots of hard work, but the culmination was coming out the other side and writing a book, which was the start of the journey that I'm on now. And you mentioned in your bio on LinkedIn, because I did stalk mm. that, <laughs> that, which is another reason to have a good bio on LinkedIn, by the way, um, because, you know, you don't know who's reading it and um, gleaning mm. that information about you that's really useful. Yeah. Um, so that uh, promoting that book then led to conversations with an American yes. um, broadcaster or American company. I've forgotten the it's, exact. It was company. Yeah. So, so what happened was um, I decided that, but as I started to heal, uh, part of my therapy had been to write and journal and my therapist had encouraged me to write. And so as I started to talk a little bit about coming out the other side, this is like 10 years later, uh, and talk about my story, people kept saying, you need to write, you need to write, you need to write about this. And I said, well, it's a pretty dismal story to write about. And people kept saying, well, no. But it's not once you've come out the other side. Yeah, you it's can't not once you come out write, the other side. I feel terrible. That's not a story, but yes. Correct. And so I did that and thought, okay, I'm going to now embark on a speaking and author career and I'm going to be a bestseller, yada, yada, yada. That's not quite what happened. So um, <laughs> I did I did a lot of education, self-education, business education, social media and marketing, and I knew that I had to increase my social media presence and that's what I did. And on LinkedIn, um, I'd started to, to do that. In the background, I'd gone on to produce the audiobook and I was going to get an actress to voice narrate it and the producer kept saying, no, 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 you need to do it yourself. And I'm like, no, 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 no someone else can do that and she's like no I'm going to help you do this we're going to do it together you need to read your story so a very powerful process there's something different between writing words and then actually speaking out your story so it was another healing point and another moving forward point and at the end of that she sat me down and said Tony there's something about your voice your energy and and your persona you should be in media and i again said hell no <laughs> never going to happen i am an imperfect 50 year old that would not look good on any sort of media that was my response to her but which is I, actually crazy <laughs> one yes but because that's how I felt. Want, yeah, that's how you felt. Yeah. That's how I felt. I felt that I was not perfect enough to show up in media, let alone social media, let alone Facebook lives, anything like that. So I was, I still am an introvert, but the thought of appearing in front of people was horrendous for me. I had not had decent, I, I got the first photos that I actually looked at myself and liked when I was 55. I hated photos. I hated all of that. But this is what happens when you start on that journey of developing who you might be outside of healing, um, outside of trauma and outside of depression and anxiety. Um, the media guy in the US, I asked him a question about podcasting. Like, what is podcasting, I think was the question. He come back to me and said, well, why would you podcast when you can live stream and get a podcast anyway? And I'm like, what? I don't understand. How does that work? And so that started, that was the thing. And so that year was my year of saying yes, no matter how petrified I was. And I did it. I started radio live streaming. Didn't have the video, just the microphone and me. First six months, 
sick to the pit of my stomach every time I got on the damn show. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. And then the little boys, yes, you can. Yes, you can. What happened though, Nat, was that people started to say, I love being interviewed by you. I've never told someone that before. I feel safe when I talk to you. And I thought, okay, well, maybe maybe, there, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can be the conduit for people feeling safe because I'm passionate about people's stories. I'm passionate about their trauma. I'm passionate about their entrepreneurial journey. So all of that sort of culminated, started as Radio Tony, evolved to Tony TV, and now we've just launched our own TV network, Netflix for Women, Everyday Women's Network. And so I think the part that part of this story where I see a lot of people getting stuck is in the bit between, um, you know, ideally you don't have a massive breakdown. Like that is not recommended. (laughs) (laughs) However, generally there's a, there's a, some sort of reason that people want to make that transition away from um, a nine to five job. They've got a passion for something. They're driven by to, you know, to, to achieve something, to share a message, create an impact. Um, but how do you actually, because what I see is people struggling with, okay, I need to, you, you read about all the things you should be doing um, yes. to yes. get your voice heard. Yes. I'm really passionate about uh, people finding their voice and this is exactly <laughs> the sort of thing I'm talking about. Yeah. How do you wake up and go and set up um, the streaming service and um Connect all the tech for one thing is like a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> and like that's enough. Oh, this is too hard. I'm going to walk away from it. See, um, that's the thing. I had the same reaction. So for me, it had to be easy. It had to, uh, as a middle-aged woman, um, I needed to understand how it works. Now, I don't confess to always understanding, but I have a general and that was just me educating myself. And it's also the part in there that's important for people is to back yourself, number one, show up day in, day out, which is another part of the piece. So I showed up no matter how I was feeling and there's some days where I was shaking before the show and I just kept doing it. And eventually you start to go, all right, this is okay, I'm safe it's all good and you keep going and then you start to get feedback from people and that keeps you going on the track and I actually feel like there is everyone has a path that they they follow or a, a, a vision or a desire and early on in the piece I had a vision of connecting women um, back then it was like having my own radio station with lots of women connected on it and that sort of grew and evolved as tech changed and as I learned more the vision got bigger and the trajectory of learning got bigger and there's amazing tech out there and you don't actually have to do it alone so I leverage experts in the US that's where I started so I use their tech and their systems to broadcast me across the world. And once I'd been doing that, and I still work with these guys, I love them to death. Big shout out to BBS Radio TV out of Texas. Those guys rock. They are divine human beings. So we still do that. But then I've gone on and built my own platform and I will be able to live stream out of that platform once I test the latest round of programming, which the guys have just set up. And I'm going to try and hopefully test later today. So I think the the key takeaways there are there are always people to help you. It doesn't mean you need to spend, you know, thousands of dollars either. There are people to help you. Tech keeps on changing. So just kind of get in wherever you can Mm -hmm. and um, and just start and then don't let those sort of things put you off. Um, And then I think I've noticed too the showing up every day part is um, actually really crucial, even if you feel like you're talking to nobody. Correct. So, yeah. And I'm telling you, honestly, in... I was literally talking to no one. But the thing is that if you do something on the internet like streaming, someone down the track 20, 30 years later might actually hear what you say. 20, 30 years later, hopefully not. It's going to stay around forever. So my great-granddaughter will be able to Google her great-nana and go, oh, wow, Nana said that. That's the thing. So it's... it's not always about creating instant success. 
creative yeah it's the it's the longer the term legacy impact. and the impact and if i if one person one woman in particular hears me tell my story and that helps her get through an hour of a day that's really difficult then my work's done so my aspirations uh, whilst the vision is big the daily aspirations are small mm -hmm. just one person once a day every single day yeah yeah it's, and that does simplify it a mm. hell of a lot so just looking at some numbers so you currently mm. and look we can get carried away with the amount of followers right because Correct. followers is the reality is not every one of your followers is seeing everything you do um there right. are a lot of people in there but anyway not to play it down i'm just kind of giving some context because yeah. uh, you can do a lot with um, a small number of followers but not to take away from your success, you have, you know, 33, over 33,000 oh, wow. LinkedIn followers. And then cool. when I checked earlier on the Instagram, you've got like 14,000 or something. Yeah. Um, how the hell did you do that? Again, so I got education around the best way to do things. And so where LinkedIn was concerned, back in the day when LinkedIn allowed you to connect to more people than they do now, that was what I did morning and night. I connected to as many people as I could who had similarity of interest, similarity of business, and who might be um, someone good to have in my network. And I did that religiously. Mm -hmm. The same with Insta and the same with Facebook, um, the same with Twitter, uh, the same with YouTube. So it's that daily work, um, particularly around LinkedIn, because LinkedIn's particularly good for business. So back then, I think you could connect to like 250 a day. So I did 250 that's a day. That's manual, every, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's manually connecting, looking at people's profile, going, okay, I love what they're doing. Their business is this. They might be um, interested in some of the interviews that we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Connect. And then having a conversation, hi, this is what I'm doing, love to connect at some stage. And, you know, you know what the results are. Sometimes people say yes, sometimes people say no. But I just, that's, I did it the old fashioned way. Now, of mm. course, there's other ways of, of doing that in, in bigger ways now. But once you get to a certain state, then now people tend to connect with me versus we still connect to people every day, but we don't have to do it as much as we used to do because we're at a, a certain level. And with YouTube, YouTube, when you're streaming live into YouTube, it just grows um, mm. all the time. So, yes, yeah. slowly and assuredly um, I've done that. So, so for anyone, those numbers around LinkedIn, I started with 253 connections who were family and friends. And Guys. when was that? Oh, 2019. Not that long ago. It seems like a long time ago now. But no, you're right. It's not that three long. Three years. Yeah, that's yeah. super inspiring. And yeah. so, what was going through your head as you were? Because that's a lot of time and a lot of dedication, and it's that consistency that um, is often spoken about. Hmm. So, like, how did you kind of go? Well, I could be doing something else with my time, but I'm going to hit this. I'm going to keep going with this. I actually, um, so I started with Facebook and quickly realised that LinkedIn was a better leverage from a business perspective. And so I just allocated dedicated time to LinkedIn morning and night and did it religiously. I was less um, dedicated to Facebook and Instagram and more dedicated to LinkedIn and then YouTube um, because they're our main platforms. And then following on from that, we discovered that Pinterest is an amazing yes. place to be as well. And so our primary platforms are LinkedIn, YouTube and Pinterest with a little bit of Insta, Twitter and Facebook thrown in. And a lot of people listening and certainly people that um, I'm working with um, would struggle with the idea of being across all those platforms. Like that is just feels so freaking overwhelming when you're starting. I was just going to so say, <laughs> I, I had help, guys. So yeah. a lot of that stuff I did myself until I could afford to get help. 
And so now I have an amazing and a big shout out to um, Renee, who is listening. Renee is my VA and I would be just, compl- she's in the Philippines and I love her to death and I would be lost without her. So once you get um, a little bit of traction, you will need help because you can't, it's not possible and you need to utilize automation and tools. So we use a wonderful program called Feed Hive, which allows us to pre-populate our social media posts and schedule them. That's the only way we can imagine. And then on top of that, I do my own stuff. So Mm. I'll just randomly comment on something or share posts or there's that. But you've got to keep regular posting on those socials and the only way to manage it is with the scheduling tool. Yeah, I agree with that. And a team. Um, Yeah, yeah. Um, And that could be a part-time VA for, you know, to start with or somebody just a few hours uh, a week even. There are so many amazing VAs across the planet who love to do this. So Renee loves to create beautiful graphics for the business and she does it with ease and grace. I don't have to do it. I'm happy. (laughs) And then I can focus uh... on it. Yeah. My VA Jill is listening right now and yes. she helped me set this whole stream up today. So, yeah, there are. it, it is hard to do it all on your own. It is very um, hard to do it on your own and you don't get to this point um, yourself. So, And I've got a, um, a, a VA who is actually an online business manager who helps with all the tech. Yes. So, again, a big shout-out to Jen who looks after Everyday Women's Network, the platform, because... An OTT platform like Netflix is kind of a big deal. So we're all learning together about the programming, how it works, how to upload, and now how to live stream. And then once we get that done, we'll be working out how to use the e-commerce plugin for the network. So you just keep growing and learning step by step, one thing by one thing. I used to work really, really hard, really long hours. Since I had my little cancer scare early in the year, I've gone, okay, I need to take this back just a little bit. And now I've actually plugged in time for me. And um, for Mondays, for instance, that's me and team time. So that's when the girls and I, and I have a totally female um, team apart from the developers in um, India. Big shout out to WebNexus, who are our platform developers. Um, And I meet and spend time with them. So, and it's about learning as you go to do things smarter and use those automations to help you do the things that you need to do. Yeah, I can relate to that. I know that I was working some really long hours and then I still wasn't getting to things that were at the bottom of my list. And so um, I'm sure Jill is listening, but she's like, come on, when are we, do- when are we editing these videos? And come on. We're gonna- yes. And so yes. having that accountability, whatever <laughs> way, shape or form that comes is um, oh, it just keeps you moving forward. Otherwise, yeah, these things become um, barriers. Yeah. So whatever, yeah, for me it's often tech, but um, for other people it's just and don't, showing and, up. And- and don't think that, so my challenge was showing up as Tony. The second challenge was thinking I was too old to get my head around the tech. And it just it just takes me a little longer and I have to simplify everything or Tonyfy things so that I get it. So then, and the value of that is though, that I can pretty simply explain to someone, okay, you need to do this, this, and this. And in setting up the platform, our brief to the developers was, this has to be bulletproof simple. People need to be able to go bang, 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 done. Simple, yeah? Yeah, definitely. The other thing that I wanted to touch on, you mentioned that your content could be online for 20, 30 years beyond. Absolutely. Okay, but that it point, never goes away. That freaks some people out. So hey, how do I you know. how do you mentally? Because I, I have people in my network who um, are scared about commenting yeah. on a LinkedIn post. Yes, there's an Crazy. insecurity. I don't. I I find Crazy. it. It's not something that I personally relate to because I probably quite. Oh, I relate to it. I relate to that. I'll tell you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I I discovered that I had a lot of 
deep-seated fear around showing up and being me. And I had to learn that if you're prompted to comment on socials and it's within, um, you know, and it's a reasonable comment, it's not aggressive, it's not bullying, then you should do that because, and the reason behind this is, and I had to learn this, by you not showing up and you not commenting, you are depriving the world or the person that needs to hear and read your comment of that moment of clarity or progression or moving forward for them. So if you don't do it, it's not actually hurting you. It's actually stopping you show up as you're meant to show up because we all have intuition. Women are very good at shutting down intuitive thoughts. But girls, if you're listening and you intuitively feel like you need to comment on something, please don't. Please don't stop yourself. Please comment. Please support. And, and that's part and parcel of supporting each other. When you comment on someone else's post, when you share someone else's post, not only do you amplify them, but you amplify yourself. Okay? So it's a dual thing. And it's not about whether it's wrong, right, or stays on the internet for 10,000 years. We're all on the internet, all of us. We're like, don't think that because you don't comment or you don't show up that you're not anywhere to be found. You are. And that's not something you need to be fearful of unless you're sprouting words that are harmful to society. And I'm talking about bullying. I'm talking about comments and things that hurt other people. Um, the rest of it, no, comment away. Don't stop yourself. And you need to do it to get the confidence to keep doing it, yeah? So it's like a muscle. If you don't use it, it won't grow and it won't get big and it won't get strong, yeah? But you're also depriving the world of your genius. And there's someone out there that needs to hear from Natalie today about something. And you won't ever know that. You won't ever know that. But just know that there is always someone watching, listening that needs to hear what you have to say. And when you don't do that and don't do it authentically, you're depriving that person of amplifying you and themselves. Yeah. And that's why I feel personal branding or thought leadership mm. is so valuable and this Definitely. is why I teach this in my program and also my one-on-one yeah. -on -one work. Personal branding is not all about the glossy images. It's um, not. It, it creates that framework so that you know you you do the, well, we talk about inner work. I suppose it is inner mm. work, but you take time to really, really understand um, who you are, of what you stand yeah. for, what your values yeah. are, um, yeah. just like a company, um, what you're on a mission to achieve, um, your vision. Mm -hmm. that's just part of it um, but then yeah. understanding your audience so yes. we do a lot I've been hosting um, target audience uh, workshops for years where we go into mm -hmm. detail to create personas and at the time you think oh what am I doing that for but oh um, that would be that's fascinating work when you that. go back and you look at that and then I know on those days where I'm having uh, in a funk and you think oh yes. what's the point you go back to that and you go oh that's the impact that's what I want to help with um, mm -hmm. so I'm constantly mm -hmm. driven to help women particularly, but men and women, to stand up and have their voices and, heard. And so and that's like, oh, right. I've got it, to keep doing yes, that. Yes, it's not, it, it's not just women. Men have similar struggles, but for women it's ingrained in our DNA to be quiet and shut up essentially. <laughs> and for many women um, in my friend circle, um, in my greater network, Many of us are going, hell no, I don't want to spend the next 50 years of my life being quiet and hiding. And so it is what it is. I am who I am. You're going to see me warts and all, and that's a good thing. We need to make sure that the women in their 20s um, and their teens are seeing women 
talk about the stories, talk about difficulties, talk about things that are not right. That's the only way we bring equality to business conversations, global conversations, is by encouraging women to speak up. And yes, I know a lot of men have similar struggles, but the, my experience is that women struggle with a deep unworthiness that is in our DNA from the get-go. And getting past that imposter syndrome. So yeah. how how do you keep how do you move past imposter syndrome? Because I do feel like everyone oh, gosh. has it. <laughs> <laughs> every day, every day, I'll have a moment where uh, that little voice in my head goes, "Who the hell do you think you are?" <laughs> and I just smile and nod and say, "Thank you, thank you for trying to keep me safe, but it's okay." <laughs> I've got this. See that big vision up there that looks like this, 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 and this? That's where I'm headed. So thank you, but bye for now. And so then it becomes the impact you're creating for other people. So you can take yeah. your part out yes. of it. That's that's yes. what, how it works for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was just going to say my biggest pleasure in life is seeing other people succeed. And for the longest time, women have not been good at supporting other women in particular. And so now I think is a time for women to support each other and champion each other and go, go, Nat, that was just the best interview, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like we need to be doing that. We need to be supporting women. Um, and as you know, in Australia, we have this thing called the tall poppy syndrome. So that is always in the back of our head. I have beautiful American and Canadian friends who have no idea what that looks like or feels like, which is fantastic. That's and why I, I love forget. talking to them. I, I mean, I am Australian. Mm. I've grown up in Australia, but I did spend uh, nearly a decade in Canada. Yes. And I, I think that that helps in, um, mm. you know, uh, paying less attention. I don't think mm. about tall poppy syndrome as much. So I no. wonder if that, but, yeah, it is It is a, It is is a. part of our culture. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and to and to pull people down, and I and part of that idea is why I started the network as well because traditional media, traditional channels, they're so negative. The news is so negative. I want to fill our network with positive stories, positive films, positive documentaries, positive content that reinforces that women are goddesses, and we need to be reminded of it every day of our lives so i have the link for the everyday women's network which i can Yay, share. thank you <laughs> um so i'll put it in everywhere again tech is not my strength so i'll probably do it afterwards that's fine um, but um and i'll add it it's, to my newsletter as well but it's how, ewn how yeah it's ewn tv dot online so just like you subscribe to netflix you sub subscribe to everyday women's net um network and we're growing and adding content all the time and at the moment because we've just launched we've got three months for the price of one so that's running until the end of september so for six dollars ninety five six dollars ninety five and that's australian dollars get, that's that? it's us geolocated so okay it, okay okay goes to the if you're in the us it's us if you're in australia it's australian if you're etc cetera, etc cetera. okay um but that gives you access to the network and you can go in and see what we're creating the other side of that is for anyone listening who is already producing content videos lives etc cetera, etc cetera, i want to chat to you about getting your content on this platform for women. So the bigger vision is to encourage women with women's content, to have advertising that encompasses diversity and the different sorts of women, the different races, et cetera, et cetera, that our traditional media just doesn't, we don't get a say in the stories. We don't get featured. Our advertising is skewed. I want to change that. I want my granddaughter to have access to a network, a TV network that has information, education, entertainment that is female focused and try and do things differently. We also have a revenue sharing model as well, but I can tell you about that if you jump on a call. Yes, good idea. So I'll, uh -huh. add, um, I'll add your contact info as well. 
Um, but yeah, amazing. Again, I could probably talk to you for another half an hour quite easily. So that's the that's the power of Tony and, the, <laughs> and your soothing voice. So <laughs> thank you. I still see Natalie. I still, when someone says that, it still makes my heart skip a beat because <laughs> I'm just me, and I fundamentally think that I'm just a normal middle aged gal, and I'm just doing what I'm called to do. And so when you've come up that, against these barriers and oh, you've, God, yes. you've <laughs> burst through them though. So that's that's where you're different and um pretty incredible. And I'm not saying it's easy, but you you can do it. You it, and the other again, going back to that one step at a time. Some days it's a five minutes. Just let's just get through this next five minutes. Let's just get through this next five minutes. Soon enough, you'll be at the end of the day and you've gotten through another day. Sometimes that's what my days feel like. Yeah. Great advice. So I know we're out of time. Um, oh, is I'm there sorry. Anything, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy. Is there anything... Um, that you would, well, you've just said, just get through the next five minutes. But is there anything else um, you would advise someone who's starting out in entrepreneurship or um, wanting to live stream even, anything they should do? Ask questions. Ask lots of questions. And don't be afraid of asking questions. So um, often people will contact me and go, how do you do X, Y, Z? And usually we've got some little resource that will help them with that. And if I don't know the answer, then I'll go, go ask this person because they'll be able to um, answer that more uh, adequately than I can. And sometimes it's about leveraging people that have already got the experience and doing it that way. You don't have to know everything in business. That would be a key point. You don't have to know everything. Yeah, you, you have to know some basics. But don't stress about not understanding tech because there are all sorts of ways around it. I know. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm getting through it too. So, yeah, 100% on the tech thing. Exactly. But, um, yeah, thank you so much, Tony. Um, thank you, Natalie. Uh, so good to talk to you. Oh, and, the uh, other thing I was going to say is one of the key components to striving and um, growing a business is having key help and one of the key helps and the help that I've had the whole way through is around marketing and social media. So for, reach out to Natalie who has that experience and let someone else help you and those people are there to help. Like that's their passion. So let them help. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Tony. All right. Thank you so much. That was awesome. No